NBC Sports College Football presents CFA Football, a big one in the Big Ten. The Ohio State Buckeyes and the Penn State Nittany Lions. The colors of autumn starting to appear on the landscape surrounding Beaver Stadium, where today's game will be played. And when you come to Happy Valley for a college football game and the Nittany Lions are in fine fettle, I'll guarantee you all you have to do is walk across the hill and you'll gain 12 pounds. The culinary art has never been better than you'll find. I, they do all the celebrating here on top of the hill, even though they do call it Happy Valley. But there are thousands of people who have days just like this until it gets cold and starts to snow. And as you look around, I suspect you wouldn't find a single Buckeye in this crowd, would we? <laughs> It's going to be a heck of a football game, and they're all getting ready, as you can tell. The guys on the east side of the stadium say the guys on the west side ought to yell more. Joe's been politicking for it all week, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be a good football game. Bob Greasy will be along in a moment with his expert stuff after this word from our ABC station. Chaps between the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions offer some pretty exciting possibilities. Let's join Bob Greasy for that story. Keith, it looks like a lot of offense here today. Uh, some things have changed, though, at Ohio State since the days of uh, Woody Hayes. They're still big and physical, but a possession passing attack. Short routes by the wide receivers, quick drops by the quarterback, and a lot of completions and a lot of big runs. Terry Glenn at the bottom, a short route. 82 yards later, a touchdown pass. The quarterbacks take short drops, get rid of the ball very quickly. The tight ends and running backs catch a lot of balls in this new passing attack. For Penn State, on the other hand, they returned seven starters from last year's offense, the number one rated offense in the country. Their problem, the four guys they lost, are the heart and soul, including their center, their quarterback, and their tailback. The big plays of 94 are coming a little bit tougher in 95, and Fraternal knows that they're not in sync, they're a little bit shaky, and they need to straighten things out because to win today, they're going to have to score a lot of points. Okay, Bob, the, when the day's done, the Big Ten standing is going to have more shape, and who knows what this day portends. Mark Jones is working today in our New York studio. Let's join him. One as well. John Cooper, of course, the head man of the Buckeyes, and Joe Paterno in his 30th year as the Boston the Penn State Nittany Lions. Ohio State will kick off a bit of a surprise. They won the toss, elect to defer and take the ball of the second half. It is Curtis Enos and Ambrose Fletcher waiting for it for Penn State, and Enos catches the ball, falls down at the eight-yard line, so immediately there's a ragged moment for the Nittany Lions. The quarterback for Penn State this year is Wally Richardson. He's a junior, 6'4", 215, out of Sumter, South Carolina. He set a school record with completed passes 33 out of 48 in last week's loss to Wisconsin, a loss, incidentally, that snapped Penn State's 20-game win streak and 21 consecutive at home. The Lions will open now with Mike Archie and John Whitman in the backfield behind the Richardson. They've got Scott in motion, the wide receiver. They run it with Archie trying to get around the corner. He gets across the 10 to the 11. Matt Finkus makes the tackle. The Chili's starting lineup with the backs and receivers now for the Nittany Lions, who are wearing the home blue shirts. Bobby Ingram is the big play man, number 10, a wide receiver. But when people get doubly absorbed with him, Freddie Scott usually has a big day. He, well, he caught a bunch of balls. In fact, 13 passes uh, did uh, Scott catch last week when all the attention was at Ingram. They're calling it second down at six. The ball is just beyond the 11, and Richardson quickly over the middle. The pass completed for a first down to the tight end, Keith Olsomer. Now, the way Ohio State played defense last week against Notre Dame, the tight end was available most of the day. He made the open a lot this afternoon. Jeff Harding is the big guy up front for them. He leads. He's an All-American. He is from Ohio, incidentally, and was a high school teammate and friend of the Buckeyes starting quarterback, Bobby Hoying. But it's a very good offensive front for the Nittany Lions. They go to the fullback, 
And you can hear the whacking and cracking all the way to Belfont <laughs> as they slap John Whitman upside the head right at the line of scrimmage. A lot of whacking and cracking. Luke Fickle is the guy number 99 who put the first hit on the big pullback, and he anchors that line from the inside, though the two defensive ends, Finkus and Brable, are in fact lethal. They are very good. Fickle had 10 tackles last week. Curtis Enos now checks in. He is a freshman from Union City, Ohio. He weighs 231 pounds. He's your tailback. Richardson takes it, rolls it out. He's got some room to run and decides, hmm, I'll protect my body and go out of bounds. But Brian Miller zeroes in on him, the linebacker on that side for the Buckeyes. Brian Miller, Greg Belisari, and Kevin Johnson are the linebackers for the Bucks. Belisari in the middle as the leading number of tackles on the team. Usually, when you have great defensive ends, your middle linebacker is going to get. Well, you need to have you need to have somebody smart in there. He's a pre-med major, so uh, he qualifies for having some intelligence. Third down and six. I resent that. <laughs> Third and six. <laughs> 28 for their and back Richardson gets chased a bit, throws the ball to the man, wide open, it's the tight end, he's Olsimer, and he drops the ball, he had it right on his hands, and dropped it. The defensive secondary is led by Sean Springs, number 24 there, who also returns kicks. He had a good ball game last week, he's got to have a good one this week with the likes of, of the Scott and Ingram running at him all day. That's a pretty good secondary for the Buckeyes. It's young and getting better every week. Darrell Kenya is in. His punting average is just over 35 yards per kick, and it's Springs waiting back just beyond the 30. Snap is good. The kick is away, and it's a fine kick. He goes all the way back to the 15 to pick it up. Gets away from one, and they cut him down at the 20. 56-yard punt and a six-yard return. Now the Buckeyes will have the ball from their own 22 first down. Bobby Hoying over the last two weeks has had a hat hand at quarterback. Those numbers are almost season-like for some folks. He has really been on the roll the last two weeks. So from the 22, here's your first offensive play for the Buckeyes. Big crowd of 95,000 plus. Hoying changing, uh, calling the play at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to have a uh, hoarse voice if he tries to do that all day. Give it to Eddie George, and there's not much there. Maybe a yard. Brandon Noble makes the tackle. Gilly's starting lineup. Backs and receivers now for Ohio State. Include number 27. Eddie George is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's 6'3", 227. For that size man, he has great feet. Picks and chooses his way through the traffic very well. Terry Glenn, of course, is the wide out and the speed burner for Ohio State, and they are double wide at the top of the screen, as you can see. So there are three wide outs on that lineup right now. Back goes Bobby Hoying for his first pass. It's thrown out to Eddie George. George has... The fullback, Nicky Sualua, it is, and it's not going to get much because the linebacker was out there looking him right in the eye when the ball arrived. The offensive front for Ohio State is anchored by Juan Porter, but the man that gets the biggest amount of attention is that mountain that plays the left tackle side, Orlando Pace, 6'6", 320, sophomore from Sandusky, Ohio. I call him the dancing bear. He's big as a bear, but he's got the feet to dance around, and that would make him so good. A big offensive lineman that can move his feet. Eddie George is now your single back, number 27. Sualua is number 37. It's third down and nine from the 23. And the whistle. The referee is Jim Kimberling. Obviously, it's a big 10 crew. Good ball. The way of game. I offer. Burn the clock. That's what a crowd can do to you crowd of 95,000 plus. There are the rest of the officials in today's ball game. Last week, Ohio State playing at home. Hoying had the crowd with him, and Paulus from Notre Dame had the problem. This week, it's the shoes on the other foot. John Cooper knows that he's got to get the play in quickly to allow Hoying some time at the line of scrimmage 
because the crowd is definitely going to be a factor against Ohio State. And all week long, uh, the coaching staff, the players, and the local radio stations have been exhorting those who have tickets to make as much noise as they could. Third down and 13. Point pass, good. It is caught by the tight end, Ricky Dudley. And Dudley will get him back up to about the 24, and they will have to punt. Kerry Killen, uh, the defensive end, and in fact, his linebacker size of 223 pounds made the play. Well, Keith, the five-yard delay penalty was key there because were it not for that penalty, they would have been really close to picking up a first down. Bobby Ingram is waiting for the punt from Brent Bartholomew. He was a high school All-American. He's averaging right at 35 yards per punt. It's a low kick. I'd give Ingram a little room. Number 20 for the Buckeyes is down in a hurry to slow him down. Central McClellan. Now let's spend a moment with our colleague Lynn Swan. Case, you know, I think the matchups you talked about earlier are going to be so important, but the one I'm intrigued by, intrigued the most by is the tactical one. Ohio State's defense has not been able to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They've gotten out the lead, but the team behind have always had the time to throw the football. We saw it last week. We saw it against other opponents. It's going to be interesting to see if Ohio State's defense can put the kind of pressure they need to because Freddie Scott and Bobby Ingram, when they've got time, they're going to get open for big plays this afternoon. So pressure on the defense is going to be important. Thank you, Swanee. And Curtis Enos checks into the backfield again with Brian Milne now at the fullback spot. And you've got Scott and Ingram wide. Give it to Enos. To the 45-yard line. So from the 40 to the 46, they give him six yards on the carry. And Ryan Miller made the tackle. The game stories for Penn State is, first of all, they have to go back and establish the run. They've got big play people, but, but they need to establish the run. And defensively, they got to slow the Buckeyes down. They are not a good defensive team. Ohio State is explosive, but just slow them down like they did that first series. Second down and four. Tailback. Not much. We check in now with Mark Jones in the New York studio. Third down and six now for Penn State. Mike Archie is in the backfield. Good pass receiver. Richardson looking around. Goes down the middle with it. Hits the man. That's Ingram. Bobby Ingram will make a first down. Nick Lyons at the Ohio State 34. Tackled by Anthony Quinn. So the middle of the field has been open for well, the Penn State passing attack. And this is this is what Penn State did not do last week against Wisconsin. They did not hit the square end. They had not, no play for Penn State last week was over 20 yards. This one, a big gain and a good start for Richardson. Well, just across the 35 for Penn State. Long count, Richardson turns, gives it, takes it out of the belly of the tailback, keeps it, throws it out of bounds, and incomplete. John Cooper and the Buckeyes arrived at the stadium from two hours ago, and as they came off the bus, Lynn Swan asked him if they had worked this week on getting some pass rush against Penn State. We've worked on it real hard. We think that's the whole secret. Um, quite, quite honestly, we've tried to, try and, tried to do a few of those same things that Wisconsin was successful with last week. Keep the ball in front of us. We've got to take the big play away from, from Scott and Ingram. Well, so far, they haven't been able to get a hold of Richardson, though they have a couple of times yeah. had somebody in his face. Luke, Luke Fickle was in his face right then. There's your tailback, Mike Archie. With and there's not much there. The Penn State running game was not effective against Wisconsin. And uh, it looks like they may very well have the kind of a team this year, Bob, where they're going to have to throw to run. Well, you know, Franny Ganner is the offensive coordinator. He'll never have a team like he had last year. I mean, they led the nation in total offense. They've got a great offensive line back. They've got one of the players are hurt, so they got a little, they're shifting around some of the linemen. But, but the players are good enough to play better than they're playing now. They're just not in sync. Buckeyes show blitz. Can't cut through there. And 
Richardson pass again down the middle. Caught by Freddie Scott. First down at the 14, 13 yard line. So this, you know, there's a couple of ways to get big plays. John Cooper says we're going to try and take away the deep plays. You know, one way is if the receivers just run straight down, but from the right side of your screen, a square in. The flanker runs a square in. If he catches this ball and keeps going out the other side, he can run away from everybody. Square ins are going to be there all day today. We'll come to 13. It's a first down for Penn State. Look, I uh, show six-man front here. Hand the ball off to the tailback, Archie. Archie looking for daylight. Finds enough to get him down to the six-yard line. So they get some blocking from the right side of the line behind Hartings and Marco Rivera, and there are definitely threatening now. Tonight on ABC Sports, the baseball postseason party will continue. We'll have regional coverage of the American and National League Divisional Playoffs. The Yankees and the Mariners, Seattle winning last night to stay alive. The Rockies won last night to stay alive against the Braves. So check your local listings for the game in your area. Join us tonight at 7 Eastern Time for Pacific here on ABC Sports. All right, you've got the two big fullbacks in there now. Whitman 38, Moon 22, got an Ingram away. Richardson gives the ball away. For the big fullback, 38 Whitman, and the senior from Wrightsville, PA, will be very close to a first down. Joe Paterno, who watched his team lose last week to Wisconsin, and Wisconsin used the short and very effective passing game to beat Penn State. There was no fluke about it. They just simply beat them. And, yeah, and, and, and conversely, on defense, Wisconsin just laid back and took everything away from you and forced Penn State to be patient. To be a little short. And the drop pass became contagious last week. There were four drops in the ball game yep. by their primary receivers Penn that could have changed it. Paterno has been living by the big play the last couple of years. He's got kind of got spoiled with Kerry Collins and Kajana Carter and Kyle Brady. Uh, those three were drafted in the NFL, the first nine picks of the first round. So he kind of got spoiled. He said, Wisconsin took away all our big plays, and we were forced to be patient, and we just couldn't do it. Historically now, you can go back to two years ago in the Michigan game here when they had seven shots at the goal line and didn't get it in. So they've had some trouble against Michigan and Ohio State both in getting the ball in the end zone in, in that first year. But they go now to Jason Slode. You've got three fullbacks That's in there. The elephant backfield. The elephant backfield. And it is the biggest of the big <laughs> John Whitman and he's going to have the first down. It'll be first and goal for Penn State. Whitman checks in at 239, Milne is 250, and uh, Slode is up around 240. <laughs> There's a fellow who mm, earned a goodly bit of fame here last year, Jason uh, Kajana Carter, and of course yep. he was a first round first pick for uh, going to Cincinnati and uh, yep. for Benny. Yes, he did. Also a nice young man. I think in time will be a good play. I do too, Keith. First and goal from the three. Richardson hands the ball to Whit. Touchdown. behind the defense straight blocking the three fullbacks are in there and Belisari number 30 never had a chance nice blocking up front a key drive for Penn State to be on the board first and they did it running and passing a little combination of both Brett Conway for the extra point seven to nothing Penn State 603 to play in the first quarter they use 10 plays to go 50, uh, 60 yards. The Buckeyes started out behind last week. They're there again this week, but they are in a hostile circumstance this week. Good point. Conway, junior.
junior from Lilburn, Georgia, will be kicking off. Terry Glenn and Sean Springs, two speed burners, will be the beat, uh, be the beat people for Ohio State. And for those of you who don't know, they play on real grass here at Penn State. It would be virtually sacrilegious. Ten Not play. To have real grass. Here. Yeah, I agree. Keith. Ten play, 60 yards, a nice drive, and uh, got it in on the ground. I think Joe's gonna like that. One. Zone. It must be a little bit soft down there because Terry Glenn now slipped as he broke back to get the ball. And you remember that Curtis Enos slipped when he was trying to receive the opening kickoff. This week, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will be in Arrowhead Stadium. It's an AFC West ball game. Defending conference champion San Diego and the Kansas City Chiefs were... Steve Bono is having a pretty good year at quarterback. Don't. Yes, sir. They don't seem to have missed uh, Joe Montana that much. Monday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ABC Sports. It's Eddie George and Nikki Sualua now behind Hoyne. Passes away, passes caught by George, and Eddie will have a first down as he gets it up to the 32-yard line. The Penn State defensive front is not all that big. They're outweighed by some 45 pounds by the Buckeyes' offensive front. Terry Killens is linebacker size, as we told you, playing a defensive end. Brad Schioli, Brandon Noble, and Eric Clare has moved in from uh, having some trouble early on. Aaron Collins, Gerald Trillardi, and Jim Nelson are your linebackers. And again, the guy in the middle is the leading tackler. Single back, Eddie George. First down, Buckeye. George has got it. Look, finds a little daylight. His progress will be up to around the 34. He's second down and six. The defensive secondary for Penn State, and uh, you like this group, don't you, Bob? I do. I like uh, Brian Miller a lot, Mark Tate on the other corner, but Kim Herring, the free safety, is just outstanding. Jason yep. Collins would have been the hero back, but he heard both legs. That's the strength of the defense. There's no doubt about it. It is the defensive secondary. Second down, a short eight now for the Buckeyes. It's George. Goes outside. He got a hard hit from Ryan Miller as he started to turn up field. You get a penalty flag, and you may either have a hole or a push in the back. Yeah, let's see. Maybe we'll let, now let the men who are doing the job call it. But uh, the Buckeyes are walking backwards. You can see that Miller hit George. George is a big guy. He's 227 pounds, and Brian's trying to clear the head. Brian's 5'9 and 183. <laughs> Tell you what. Honey offense. George is alone. Repeat. First down. So these days, uh, it, it's easy to get yourself uh, called for something on a sweep play, even though they have freed the hands of the offensive line. It's like yeah. number 80. Yeah, I got a handful of jersey. That's uh, Ricky Dudley. So the 10-yard penalty brings the ball back to the 25-yard line. They wind up actually with the penalty gaining the yard. 7-0, Penn State out to the first quarter lead. 4.57 to play. Quite sunny day. They had some rain and some tough weather earlier this week as the remnants of uh, Hurricane Opal, which was so destructive down south. Second down, 16. Buster Tillman and Terry Glenn both come wide to the bottom of the picture. Lumpkin in motion, top of the screen. Here's Hoying back, getting up a screen. If he can get it to work, there's penetration. The people in front didn't throw a block. And uh, Clint Holt, who's playing strong safety, just came right in and locked the legs of Eddie Gregory. Well, let's look at the stories, yeah, the game stories for Ohio State. Uh, you know, offense, keep on trucking. When you're averaging 42 points a game and only over 500 yards of total offense, keep going. Defensively, they're the number eight defense in the 
in the uh, Big Ten, so they've got the four turnovers. They lead the conference in the, the number of turnovers, so they need the four turnovers. That screenplay to Eddie George only was a one-yard loss, actually, on the play, so it's third down and 17. Boying has a lot of time, goes back to George again. The wide people are not available, and I guess they call it a fumble, huh? Yep. It'll be Penn State football as they knocked it loose from Eddie George, and apparently Nelson, the linebacker, was the man who did it. And the turnover comes at 3.49, the play in the first quarter. The Nelson, number 44, gets there first, but the second man in is going to knock it loose. Can't see who that is. That's number five. That's Schioli. That's Schioli. That's exactly right. Keith, the, the holding penalty caused that whole series to go fall apart for Ohio State because it, it was third and long. They had to throw underneath, and Penn State came up and made a play. Defense better hunker down here. The Buckeyes are going to be in a pretty deep hole. Here's Richardson rolling out. Can't get loose. He'll gain a couple of yards, but Ryan Miller tracked him down. Number 43, Ryan Miller. That looked like a boot leg all the way, didn't it? Sure did. Bach rolls along at 3.30 to go. Penn State leading 7 to nothing. They own the football, second down and 8 at the 31-yard line of Penn State. Curtis Enos is in there at tailback now. Remember, he's the young man who was playing linebacker when the season started. Brady Scott goes in motion. Pitch to Enos. And from daylight over the left side. He's a big strong one, and he's down to about the 21 yard line in the first down for Penn State. Enos is 6 1 and 2 31. Yeah, I like this kid, Enos. He is a true freshman and uh, kind of been the tailback by committee. There's the hole right there. Good blocking on that side, uh, Johnson and Rivera Harding. But uh, tailback by committee, they've had Archie and Enos, Pitt, Fletcher, Eve, Everly. They've all been in there. Enos, again, not much this time. Ball from the 22, maybe advanced to the 21. And it'll be second down. Belisari and Rabel, piece of that tackle, they share it. The corners are Ty Howard and Sean Springs, and they are, in fact, preoccupied with the likes of Freddie Scott and Bobby Ingram, which makes the tight end a uh, very attractive target over the middle. But as Penn State found out last week, you don't go anywhere without your running game. I mean, you've got, it's great to have those receivers, but you need to be able to run the ball. Mike Archie now, the single back as Whitman goes in motion. Richardson with a little quick pop. Side screen. Uh, they stretch some uh, chin straps with that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wide receiver screen. The, the good news is it's a, it's a wide receiver screen. The bad news is you're coming back in there where all those high numbers are. Whoa. I mean, 92 and 99 and 94 and 70. That's those big defensive linemen, and you run right into Luke Fickle. He was a three-time wrestling champion in the state of Ohio. He's uh, well suited to be a nose tackle. Second part of good news there was Bobby Ingram was able to work away. Get up. That's a sideline cutter. Pass intended for 80. Bob Stevenson, the tight end. It is incomplete. So here comes the kicking team. The Buckeye defense does hunker down and do the job. And they're going to force Brett Conway to go to the field goal try of considerable distance. Well, they had what they wanted, Keith. They had man on man, but Stevenson just couldn't get away from Kelly. See, Conway so far this season having a good year. This is a 40-yard try. Score out of eight on his field goal. The kick is on its way. Good. At 116 to play. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. The NASDAQ stock market. The stock market for the next hundred years. By Burger King. 
where you can get your workers work. And the men and women of General Motors. And to nothing. And State, home team, out with the lead. Conway tees it up on the 35 with Springs and Glenn waiting for Ohio State. Mistakes, two mistakes. Including the fumble and the turnover. And a holding call. Big moment so far in this ball game. High hanging kick into the end zone. Glenn will not return it. Hurting seems to be a little bit soft over there, so they'll come out for the 20. And here's Mark. Ohio State now trying to start their uphill climb against Penn State. Apparently a defense today that's determined not to let them have anything big. They line up to Alua and George behind Hoying. It's George. And Eddie George is out to the 30. And very close to a first down on the carry. Once Eddie picks his direction and plants and starts, he's a low. Well, he likes to run left, too, Keith. Uh, this whole offense of Ohio State likes to run left behind Orlando Pace and Jamie Sumner. Brian Miller took off. The effects of the hit on George. He was back in there with the cornerback. It is a first down for Ohio State on the 10 yard pickup by Eddie George. Boring back, getting some heat, passes away. Pass is incomplete. It is intended for Terry Glenn at 5'11", 185, the junior from Columbus. And he's the big play guy you want to get the ball to. Look from the quarterback's viewpoint. The play action holds 47, that's Filardi. Now you want to throw the ball right back where he's going from the right side of your screen, number 83. Glenn's going to come just across his face. That could have been completed. He just yeah. threw it a little bit too hard. I'm not sure that Dudley wasn't available downfield. Well, they had a defensive back that was kind of playing both of them. He knew that there was a man coming across. Second down and 10. Here's Eddie George. And number 44, Jim Nelson. Has him by the legs. There's a pickup of a couple of yards. Ohio State third down conversion rate on the season is right at 58%. It's been outstanding, as a matter of fact. Uh, now Dudley, the tight end, out for a play, is back. In fact, Ohio State leads the Big Ten in third down conversions, which is keeping the ball. Instead of giving it up, you convert third down into first down. Could be the last play of the quarter. Boyd's <laughs> pass to the sideline. Glenn, good. First down. Terry Glenn makes a difficult catch as he falls out of bounds at the 46 yard line, and the first quarter is over. <laughs> Terry Glenn, a lot of speed. Miller's just giving him some space. Hoeing a little bit high with the throw. And after the first quarter, it's Penn State, 10. Ohio State, nothing. Here's a look at what Ohio State is going in. Penn State defensively has not done very well. They're pretty good here in total defense. But further down, the sacks, they're eighth in the league, passing their ninth, scoring defense, third down defense, not very good. Interceptions and takeaways, they're near the bottom in almost every defensive category, except for run defense. And that's what Ohio State wants to do is run the ball. But Ohio State needs to get something going. They kind of look a little lethargic here the first quarter. First down from the 46. Gives the ball off to Sue Alua, the fullback. He isn't going anywhere. Lost yardage on the play. Back to the 44. Down by number five, Aaron Schioli. Collins uh, got there in a hurry. So look did Schioli. There's a look at the numbers in the first quarter. Uh, total yards, 92 for Penn State. One turnover on the fumble led to a field goal for Penn State. 
Home State had the one good drive offensively. Second down and 12. Boyan looking around. Let's it go down the sidelines. His man is there. It is booked at the 23 yard line by Terry Glenn. Oh, he's got some foot speed. Uh, this is just a good play by Glenn. There's a little play action fake that holds the safety. Miller thinks he's got a little bit of help, 34, but the safety was held by the play action. This is a big time catch right here. 33 yards on the completion for Glenn. And first down at the Penn State 23 as we start the second quarter of play. The Beaver Stadium, happy down. The Buckeyes, Keith, may need something like that to get them started. A little jump start here, a kick start. Eddie George. Well, the Ohio State offensive front, even though they've got a 45-pound advantage for man, they are not knocking the net lines off the ball. Second down. Yes. Well, that's because they're not going mano a mano. They're not going straight up. Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator, has them going into the gap. And you don't just play straight up on guys like Goldson and Daniels and, and Pace. Here's a look at Jerry. Not after steps into the ball game now for the Lions at a defensive end. Second down and nine. Boyd rolling out here. Gets away from Atkins. That'll do it. Number 93 catches up with him, Brandon Noble. He didn't have anybody available to throw the ball to, so rather than dump it, he ate it. Well, he had somebody, he just didn't see him, Keith, uh, because of the... Uh... There's a look, the receivers are going to come down like this, and the other one's going to come around, but the receiver that's going to be open is going to be right in the middle of the field. Now watch as he rolls out. The receiver in the slot's open, but he can't see him. Look at all the people between them. These people right here, you don't see them because you can't see through those people. You're sitting up here at the stands and people say, hey, he's open, throwing the ball. Well, from ground view, he couldn't see. They're down and 14 after the loss. Boyan going down the middle, touchdown, Terry Glenn. That's right. That's right. Yep. A handful he, as advertised. And they gamble, you gotta pay the price. And he is man to man, and he's man to man on the strong safety that Flint holds. He's filling in. If there's one man I want to get Glenn on in that secondary, it's the strong safety hold. He's playing for the injured Jason Collins. Josh Jackson for the extra point. Brian Heinen. It's sort of a feeble thing, but it works. And it's 10 to 7. 12, 14 to go in the half. And the man in the secondary. Here's Glenn. Single coverage on the strong safety. The pass is down the middle. The linebackers blitz. Glenn one on one. Hoying knows it immediately, and he looks to his main man, throws it out in front of him, and that's a big drive. Terry Glenn got him going, and Terry Glenn got him in the end zone. Of course, Hoying put the ball right on the money. Of course, that's a quarterback describing the play. Now, well, how would you describe it? <laughs> Receiver standpoint, I guess. Uh, or a tight end, yeah. Just like you. Go line. Curtis Enix. Off the of the crowd almost. Almost got away. Up to the 25 26. And here's Mark Jones. <laughs> all those passes, a halfback pass. Just over the 25 yard line for the Nittany Lions. It is a first down. Curtis Enos and Brian Mill in the backfield. This is Enos. Joe Paterno doesn't like to play true freshman, but he's getting this kid in more and more.
because he has the ability. 36 yards. He, he's got the speed, he's got the power, he's got the patience. You're going to see a lot of uh, Curtis Enos in this game and I think down the future for Penn State. Ball is on the Ohio State 38-yard line as Mike Archie comes in for him. He's on the sidelines getting a little breather. Archie, quick, but they've had a slow start this season. Has the ball right here. He popped it. And he's going to pick up about seven yards. Well, then here's Lynn Swan. Well, I'm with Kajana Carla who knows something about running the football. Are you as surprised about Chuck Enos as we are? No, um, actually, he's my recruit, and, you know, I always bring in the, the flashiest recruits. But uh, I'm really happy for him. I didn't think he was going to play as much as he was this year, but he's doing well, and I knew he had his, his talent. And now he's there to let everybody in the rest of the country see what he has. Describe that talent from what you saw when he was just a recruit. Um, big. I mean, he's huge. He's like 230. When you look at it, you wouldn't know that. And he's shifty, and he, he got some speed, but he got a lot of power. So, Jonathan, thank you very much. Second down, three. And Richardson throws it away. Finkus had a hold of him, uh, so let's watch uh, Jim Hemmerling mark off the penalty and go back to Lynn Swan. Kajana, the injury, you know the knee is hurt. Can you tell us what your status is right now? Well, my status is very well. I, I, I've been going down to Birmingham the last four weeks, and I think they're very happy at what's going on. I've been running. I ran in my fourth week, which is really unusual for our ACL surgery, and they're very happy. I'm doing well. I gotta get the rest of the swan out, but I'm feeling real good right now. You're less than a year removed from college football. What's the biggest change you've seen going into the pros? The environment. Um, up here is just so tense. You know, if you lose a game, it's, it's over. In the pros, you can lose one game, but you still can go to the playoffs. And you know, just being a, being around the college experience, you know, I, I miss it a lot, and I'm I'm happy to be back. I know you're getting a little bit of it back here in the sidelines. Okay, yeah. Kate. Third and 15 after the intentional grounding penalty, and Richardson lets it go. for Chris Kimball. He was in a foot race with Sean Springs. Springs is a tough guy. You're right, Keith. Springs, the best defensive back on this ball club, was step for step with Campbell. That'll get Kenya into the ball game. 10 to 7, Penn State leading by three. And Springs now, after that long run, but Campbell will drop back to receive the punt. Kick is away. He had a 56-yarder his first time. This is a high hanger. And they get it right at the goal line. Flap it down. And it will be first down. Ohio State at about the two. So Kenya puts the Buckeyes in a hole. Bad for Mr. Glenn. Pretty good yeah. numbers right here. <laughs> Last three weeks. Well, that includes today. All right, here comes Ohio State with the ball at their own two-yard line. Eddie George and Sualoa in the end zone. No mistakes here. Just get the ball out. Give it to George. And he crosses the five, falls forward to the six. Here's where you need to really work that big offensive front. But again, as Bob pointed out, Jerry Sandusky's troops are lining up in the cracks. And right behind him, that end zone, Keith, you're not going to be checking off down there. Sandusky's saying, hold him in there, but for Ohio State and Hoying, you've got to call a play, make sure you don't have to check off, and don't do anything fancy with your cadence because you don't want anybody uh, not hearing your cadence. Second down at about seven. Hoying still got it. Pay the price for it. Aaron Collins tracked him down and made the tackle. Number six. Fighting Irish and the Huskies will get it on this afternoon out in Seattle, Washington. That follows our game from Happy Valley at Penn State University. Hoying so far in the ball game today, eight of nine for 98 yards and a touchdown. And they're looking at third down. Well, they're going to throw it. And it's Glenn. Glenn makes 
the catch out at the 19-yard line for a first down. That's one of those kind of passes you just hold your breath, yeah. hope it gets there. Yeah, yeah. You just call works. that. Just, just call this confidence. This is uh, Joel Hollis, the offensive coordinator, just has confidence in the guys that are running this offense. You've got Hoying, who is the second leading passer in the nation, throwing to Glenn, who is third in the nation in receiving yards. I mean, just a lot of confidence in your people and, of course, in your offensive line up front. That is also the kind of a pass that can go the other way in a hurry. Glenn now has four catches for 87 yards, and they're all the first down. Here's Hoying back again. Let's it go down the middle. Big tight end, Dudley. Dudley has a big play to the 44-yard line, and Bobby Hoing, as he released the ball, took a lick. Well, let's take a look from behind the offense. Get a look and see what the quarterback sees. Play action fake, trying to hold the linebackers. Now, looking for the tight end, the big tight end. There he is. This offense, Keith, reminds me a little bit of Penn State's last year. They've got an outstanding quarterback, an outstanding receiver, a great running back, and a tight end that can get downfield and catch the ball. That Calhoun checks in at fullback, leading the blocking for Eddie George when he bounces outside and goes for 10, 11, 12, maybe 13 yards. Another first down. The Buckeyes show a little feistiness in the offense with 8.55 to play in the first half. 10 to 7, Penn State leads by three, and you've got Demetrius Stanley shaken up on the play. Watch, Keith, the offensive lineman as uh, Sumner, 72, the left guard, and Pace, 75. They had a little game there, and the two linemen recover. Nice move, and Calhoun find it, found it back over to the left. First down. Hoyt's pass to the sideline. Good. Oh, he couldn't have been in by much. Down to about the 32. And that'll be another first down for Terry Glenn. First down, Ohio State. He's wearing out the toes of his shoes. And, and, and Hoying is throwing it out there because he can't find. There you go. One foot in. That's all you need in college. Great effort. He's throwing it out here because he can't find the defensive back, so he's throwing it safe outside. That is just an outstanding catch. Well, I tell you, this kid is something. Well, how far has he come in the well, last couple of years? Glenn. Last year. He straightened out his whole life. Well, almost was ineligible, got healthy, got eligible, turned his uh, career around. It's just an outstanding receiver. Man. Timeout, Ohio State. 8.31 to play in the first half. Penn State leading 10-7. last year basically a senior team this year sometimes senior teams are complacent I asked Joe Paterno about that yesterday I don't think we've ever gotten in sync the way we would like to be uh, we have not been able to come up with the expectations of people and, and, and you know some days you don't coach well and the kids don't play well you know you drop pass and things like that but the other guy doesn't play well or, or they turn it over to you in a key spot and you end up winning in spite of the coaching <laughs> uh -huh. 32 yard line Eddie George the single back for the Buckeyes first down and 10 George with it hit twice behind the line of scrimmage but he's big and strong and will carry it across the 30 Pick up of about three yards. First man that had a piece of him was Brad Schioli. Couldn't hold it. Eddie George now, nine carries, 41 yards. Schioli, uh, Keith, that defensive tackle in the number five. <laughs> I was kidding Joe Paterno yesterday. I said, Joe, this kid was a quarterback in high school. He's a linebacker and a quarterback, number five. He's a because he wore a number five in high school. Then they made him a defensive end. Now he's a defensive tackle. Two years ago, he was a quarterback in high school. 265 pounds now. Bob Hoyer back. 
That's it, Joel, to the outside man. That's coming out of the backfield, Sua Lua. He's down to about the 25-yard line. Here's 20. Keith, Demetrius Stanley came out with a mild thigh bruise, and it probably occurred as he was blocking downfield in front of Eddie George a few plays back, and Eddie, looking for a way to go, just kind of ran up his back, and then he limped off the field, and that's often is the case for a wide receiver or a lineman. When the back is trying to get those extra yards, he just seems to run up on them a little bit and cause an injury. Hey, Lenny, how about that catch Stanley made last week, huh? Oh, I told him it was a great catch, and <laughs> one of the guys walked up and said, Swanee, don't tell him that. His head might get you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he deserves That's, it. It was a great catch. It was. Wow. Wayne Stanley's son, incidentally, who played for Earl Bruce at Iowa State and was on Earl's staff at Ohio State. Hoying, looking down the middle, goes down the middle. Dudley, touchdown! Ricky Dudley, 6'7 and 240. A former basketball player who is growing every week as a football player. Yeah. The yeah. numbers on Hoying, Bob, are startling. 13 out of 14. Here's the tight end right here. He's just going to go straight down the field. Now watch the linebacker. The linebacker is going to try and cover him all the way. The safeties take off and double the outside receivers. They're trying to shut down Glenn. So what happens? Hoying goes to his tight end down the middle. I tell you, it reminds me, this offense, I mean, that, that's Kyle Brady last year doing the same thing for Penn State. Yep. The extra point by Josh Jackson is good. And so Ohio State goes for the lead, 14 to 10 at 7.32 to play in the second quarter. 98 yards in nine plays. Talk about a big drive from behind the defense and above the goalpost. It's a great shot. I love this shot. Looking straight down the field, he sees the safety split. The linebacker never sees the ball. And of course, when you're six seven, he's a big target. Hoying is on fire. The last three weeks, he is playing better than any quarterback in the country. 13 of 14, 175 yards, two touchdowns for Bobby Hoying. Buckeyes came into the ball game, ranked number five in the country. Enos and Fletcher wait. Malcolm's kick. And Rose Fletcher on the near side. A nice. Two yards deep. Here comes Enos. Out to about the 18-yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. This time, Chevrolet contributing almost five and a half billion dollars to the scholarship funds of American colleges and universities. Now we yes. said uh, said we got to score some points uh, to win this one, huh? Oh, yeah, you'll get some points. You'll get what? You figure both teams might even one of the winners got to be in the 30s, I would guess. Uh, would you? I would think they're going to just keep scoring. Yeah. And that's, yeah. For a couple of offensive guys, that ain't bad. Richardson to the sidelines for Ingram, who's been very quiet. And that is incomplete. Ingram, four catches. No, that's the uh, Richardson, four out of nine. But what about Ingram and Scott? Well, they've been quiet. Ingram, two catches, 22 yards. Second down and 10. Scott, one catch for 20 yards. Over the run. Enos, the tailback. And he came flying upfield and picked up a first down. Boy, he was a half a stride from breaking it big. Here's Mark Jones. Yep. Enos now 64 yards on six carries. That's pretty good average. Better than 10 pop. He's got it again. Now he's got a pretty good clutch, doesn't he? He changes <laughs> gears rather quickly. Well, uh, you know, I, I like that kid. You know, uh, it's not fair to compare him to Kajana Carter. To me, but, he, but he has the patience. He doesn't just run into the back of an uh, offensive lineman. If there is not a hole there, and it's supposed to be there, he's got the vision that he and, and good feet that he'll stop and go one way or the other. He's uh, 231 pounds, so he weighs a little bit more than Kajana did. Second down and four with Scott in motion. Got it again, Enos. 
He was hit behind the line of scrimmage, number 52, Kevin Johnson. Well, he stepped right out of his arm. Went ahead and picked up a couple of yards. And number 30, Frank Balasari. And maybe one more. He will leave now, and Mike Archie comes in. Archie is, um, of all the tailbacks, the best receiver. That's right. And Archie um, has had a back problem, and, 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 and he's not played as well in the past because his role has been different Perfect. because Kajana is not there. But he is the best receiver by far. Richardson, a little pop over the middle to the tight end. Olsener. And he's able to muscle himself across the 45 and pick up the first down. He is from Moscow, Pennsylvania, is Keith Olsen. Northwestern Michigan games kind of interesting, especially the Bob Greasy. <laughs> Northwestern. <laughs> no, Northwestern is one of the surprises of, uh, of college football. Yes. Yeah. This is Curtis Enos carrying the ball and it's slipping and sliding his way through there for about five yards. And let's check in with down to the city of the Red Stick, though. It might be a little harder. Yeah. Than and talk about another surprise team, LSU, on the way back. Yeah. Third, a second down and five. They're working with the ground game as Whitman, the 239-pound fullback, hangs in there. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. 14 to 10. Ohio State has the lead. They just got it a few minutes ago. A couple of minutes ago. So it'll be third down and still four and a half. Right about the fourth and a half. Richardson. Quick drop. Gets a little heat. Gets some holding. But they got away with it. The pass is off the hand. Of one of the uh, the fullback Whitman coming out of the backfield, second man tried to come up with it, but he was out of bounds. It's an incomplete for it. Tomorrow night here on ABC, if there is no baseball, it's an hour of America's funniest home videos, followed by a new episode of Lewis and Clark, and then Damon Wayans and Bruce Willis will star in the Last Boy Scout on the Sunday night movie. Tomorrow night here on ABC. Kenya is in for the punt. Sean Springs will return it. The sun pops out bright. 4.07 to go in the first half. No pressure. The kick is away. Springs is going to let this one go. And it takes a sideways bounce. And Kenya has done it again. For the second time in a row, he puts the ball dead inside the five. Brad Johnson and number 19. Last time the Buckeyes started down there, they went 98 yards and nine plays. Well, the last time he had some help in knocking the ball back out from uh, Brad Pantall, the uh, kicking team specialist. But this time, he didn't need any help. He did it on his own. Well, Jason Simon of Carlisle. Oh, no Bobby Hoying comes out. The ball is right Jason after three. Of Carlisle. Buckeyes leading 14 to 10. Eddie George and Nicky Sualua. Sualua is a sophomore from Santa Ana, California. 5'11", 245. He and Matt Calhoun is a principal fullback. Don't carry the ball much. Once in a while, they go out as a receiver, but basically they're blocking back. George. State got some pretty good outside pressure that time. And Dudley, the tight end, picked the man off just before he got a hold of George. Sandusky lost seven starters from this defensive team of last year, and he, they're young. The linebackers are, are all three new starters for the first time this year. He lost his strong safety, Jason Cole Collins, for injuries, and uh, two of his defensive linemen graduates. So he's playing with some new players. Buster Tillman goes in, and Bob Hauser, a second tight end, comes off the field now. A second down and nine. And it's George. And Eddie George steps out of the hands of the would-be tackler. He got away from Brian Miller, number 34, who seemingly had him. He just high-stepped on up the field and picks up a first down. Maybe. It'll be close. It is a 
first down. Take a look from on top of the goalpost right here from the own end zone. I tell you, Keith, this, this, the, the, the impressive thing, watch, he's going to make the first man miss right there. Brian Miller misses the tackle. And I made a little reference earlier to how this Ohio State team reminds me of Penn State's offense from last. They've got so many people to go through. Kyle Brady was the tight end. They've got Dudley. They've got George to go to. They had Kajana Carter last year. The quarterbacks were playing well. So many targets, so many weapons. George again runs into the stack, just simply steps away from it, and just keeps on pounding and puts it across the 20. He's got about six yards on that carry. And defensively, you couldn't have wanted anything better the last two series than to have them backed up inside their five-yard line. The Buckeyes came over yesterday in three charter planes, turboprops, over the airport size here in State Park. They chose to fly in here rather than uh, take the big plane over to Harrisburg and bus over. 58 yards for Eddie George. Second down and three. And look at it. Look at it. And he just keeps on changing gears and directions. And when you think you've got him pinned up, he still flips away from you. But he is not going to have the first down. But the planes came in, the three charter turbo trucks. And several of the Ohio State youngsters have never been on a prop thing, including Sean Springs, who, when Steve Staff walked in, had shoo <laughs> <laughs> Steve Staff, the sports information director <laughs> at Ohio State, and a very fine one. That's probably an exhilarating experience. I like the story that Snap told you dinner last night about Woody Hayes. <laughs> yeah. You have to tell us that one in a minute. Third down and two. Eddie Jones won't get it. Nittany Lyons stopping. And leading the defensive surge was number 89, Eric Flair, who got his first starting role of the season. So the Buckeyes will be looking at fourth and one and almost surely punting. Bartholomew is into the ball game to punt. It'll be his second of the day. His first was good for 39 yards. And Bobby Ingram, old trouble himself, is waiting for him. Sending back inside the 40. Kick is out of there. Good kick. Got a little heat on him, but it's a good kick. Runs Ingram all the way back to the 23. And still going. Look out. All the way back to the 43. 52 yard punt. But a terrific return by Bobby Ingram. And look, and look who made and the he's tackle. getting up slowly. Yeah, Grable, the starting defensive end, made the tackle. Well, the story was that Woody had put all the first unit offense and the, and the core of the coaching staff on one airplane with him. All the reserves were on the other plane. Mm -hmm. And so they're coming in, and he, the pilot informed him, Coach Hayes, that the weather's kind of tough, winds are high, might be a difficult landing. Woody said, well, I'll tell you what you do. You send uh, the other plane in first, and then we'll see what happens. If they make it, we'll go in. <laughs> <laughs> they both made it. Uh, <laughs> this is Mike Archie, and that's his best effort of the day. Picked up about nine yards. Timeouts remaining, two for each team. At halftime, Mark Jones and Todd Blackledge scores and highlights from around the country. They've got a story about Washington Husky defensive back Lawyer Malloy. And Richardson's pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. It'll be incomplete. Oh, and Lewis Johnson will talk to Grambling State's Eddie Robinson. Robinson because today First is down. the day that Eddie goes for win number 400. How about that, huh? I love it. You know, I played for some good coaches, but I would like to have played for Eddie Robinson. I just like to go sit on the river bank and fish with him yeah. and, and chew the fat because yeah. he's a terribly interesting man. Knows a lot about human beings. Curtis Enos is back in there on third and one. And he's going to have the first down. Not by a whole lot, mind you, but he's got it all right. This is great field position here, Keith, for Penn State just before the half. They're inside the 50. They've got 42 seconds left and a couple of timeouts. They need to get something out of this drive. And there's a look at the winningest active coach. Joe Paterno talked about Eddie Robinson. 
Richardson's pass to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. Bobby Ingram caught it, but he couldn't get a foot down. Second down. You got 35 seconds left to play in the first half. Enos out, Archie in. Richardson is one of his last eight. Brett Conway warming up on the sidelines to play stretcher for the line. They need to pick up another 20 yards. Yeah. Richardson again. Oh, now they get him. I'm just about to say no pressure, and he spun around, and he gets rid of the ball. Matt Bondhouse had a hold of him, but he wasn't able to stop him from throwing the ball in the general direction of uh, fullback Brian Milne. And so it's an incomplete forward pass. 29 seconds remaining in the first half. Third Matt, down and ten. Matt Bonhouse, uh, Keith, the man that was putting the pressure on there is a sixth-year senior. He was red-shirted one year, then had a medical redshirt another year, and is playing as good as he can play right now, walking with the Bill Young, the defensive coordinator. He is the captain of the defense. Chris Everly shows up in the backfield. But Richardson is dropping, setting up a screen, and he, Everly has it. And there's a penalty flag thrown at the 46-yard line. So that one might come back. Jim Kimberly, the man in the white hat. Illegal use of hands against Penn State. So the Lions hurt themselves. John Cooper wanted a little bit better pass rush uh, today, and it looks as though he's getting it. Eberle's in. They want put him in to run the screen pass. 43 is Miller dropping back. He sees the lineman. Ingram number 10 blocking on 43. It's all right. Now, now there's where the penalty is right there. Initially, he was all right. And then when Miller got in front of him, Ingram pushed him from behind. And it makes it third down and 20. Eunice is running the ball on third and 20. Ohio State, three of them over there just put their heads down and went after it. Yeah, yeah. That just that doesn't speak very highly of the confidence of your. I know Enos has been running well, but there's a chance of him picking up enough yardage to get into field goal range. Um, well, they're not now. They're certainly not in field no, goal range. It's you know, fourth and eleven. I think if, if you, you got the crew that you had last year, Kerry Collins and. Uh, <laughs> Brady and Kajana Carter, you put the ball up in the air, but, but uh, with this this year, Wally Richardson, there's a look at Kajana. Wally Richardson uh, doesn't have a lot of experience. He started five games and won four, but uh, Penn State's going to go ahead and kick it away. It's disappointing because they had an opportunity to get down and get some points before the half. 14 to 10 ball game, only nine seconds remaining. Maybe it's a quick flip. Well, if it was, they messed it up. Now, they had a timeout call. They come out in a hurry to kick it away. So I guess they decide, well, since we've spent it, we might as well use it. But I don't know why you call timeout if you're going to punt the ball. No, we yeah. Somebody did when they shouldn't. I, I don't think you punt the ball. You call timeout. There's nine seconds left. You just, you just either... You take, you drop back, and you throw it down all the way downfield. That'll burn up nine seconds. But Sean, Sean Springs is not going to be messing with it. He's just going to let the thing drop. And here comes Enos back you know, in the game. Uh, Archie goes back out, putters off the field. You've got a timeout left. If you complete a long pass so over the middle, call timeout, and you kick the field goal. Richardson hands the ball off to Enos. Enos runs it. Cut up the middle. I don't know. Some displeasure expressed from the crowd, yeah. stopping the clock with three seconds. Yeah. And now Bobby Hoying can crank up one and let it fly. Now I think there, I think Joe probably wanted Enos to go outside and maybe pick up some big yardage and burn up the clock. Instead, he went inside. But um, I think if you had a veteran quarterback that's played a lot of games, you let him throw the ball in those last two situations. But Wally Richardson has not played a lot. Uh, he's not thrown a lot of interceptions, but he's only started, this is his sixth start. We 
looks like Ohio State may just touch it. But you got three wideouts now, and you got trips to the bottom of the picture. So let's see what they decide to. I would think you'd throw it as far as you could. Boy, ain't looking around. Let's it go. Lynn falls thrown out of bounds. Bobby he wasn't able to keep it in. Looking for Glenn, and the half is over. A bit of confusion there at the end of the first half of play as Ohio State goes to the clubhouse leading Penn State 14 and 14 to 10. In the kind of a ball game, I guess basically we expected, except possibly more scoring. Well, I think in this type of game, everybody's been conservative. The defenses aren't allowing the offenses to score a lot of points real quickly. The opening score was uh, run by Big John Whitman, fullback, three yards, capping a 60-yard drive to give Penn State the lead by a score of seven to nothing. This old